See how stocks closed out the first day of trading in March. It was a, a bit of an ugly February as all three closed down. And here you're seeing the first day in March, the Dow finishes up just barely eking out of green, uh, up five points. The S&P drops just marginally, as does the NASDAQ. So we start March out on a mixed note. With us now to talk about it, what lies ahead in studio, Emily Rowland, John Hancock Investment Management co Chief Investment Strategist. Nice to see you. Thanks Thank you for, for being me. here in studio. What is ahead of us? Are you getting a sense of it at all, or are we just going to kind of two steps forward, three steps back sort of sense of it in the next couple of months? Yeah, I do think markets are kind of contending with this good news, bad news dynamic that's playing out. You know, especially in the month of January, we saw this pop in economic data, a little bounce in areas like PMIs, certainly China PMIs this, this morning, surprising on the upside. I'm sure you've covered that throughout the day today, uh, and inflation prints coming in a little bit hotter. Those two things do tend to go hand in hand. Um, of course, pushing bond yields higher, but again, what's good news for the economy, good news for the labor market, not so great news as it, as it relates to Fed tightening, central bank tightening, likely they need to do more. Another 50 uh, basis points in rate hikes now being priced into the market. So I don't think investors are quite sure what to do with that. So just expect volatility in the months ahead? I think volatility is going to be the name of the game. And what's no most notable about this market to us is that it seems like risk assets are acting like there's nothing wrong, um, pricing in essentially like zero probability of a recession now. And we're seeing that in terms of the riskier corners of the market, really seeing leadership again. You look at small cap equities having a, a really great relative month in February. You look at European equities on a tear. Um, these are cyclical higher beta areas that don't usually do that well um, when the macroeconomic environment is deteriorating. You know, you wake up and there's meme stocks back in the headlines, cryptocurrencies. It's kind of surprising to see that level of risk taking and a pretty precarious economic growth backdrop. And given something we also talked about earlier is the 10 year um, hit 4% earlier in the day, gained 50 basis plus points in February. Um, what does that tell you is down the road? Yeah, I mean, I think that that 4% level is kind of a psychological level where oh, we yeah. all kind of, no and I question. think everybody turned to each other and said, oh my gosh, the 10-year treasury is at 4%. You know, and again, I think it is evidence that growth is, is re-accelerating. I think it is a bit of a counter trend bounce in our view in economic growth. And of course, inflation coming in better, China growth certainly playing out here. Um, but when we look down the road and throughout the rest of 2023, you know, all of the indicators that we watch, a deeply inverted yield curve, this morning to the tune of 90 basis points on the 210 year. We look at the leading economic indicators, which are signaling a recession's forthcoming at negative 6% year over year. We're looking at financial, or not necessarily financial conditions, but lending conditions tightening. The consumer is starting to see some cracks in our view, you know, it does look like a recession is going to unfold. In that environment, bond yields fall. They don't go up. So I think eventually you'll see that re-rating in the fixed income market, making this probably an attractive entry point. 